So hi, my name is Josh Saul. I run technical marketing at Abstra, now part of Juniper. And uh, now I'm gonna to talk to you about our VMware NSXT integration. So in previous releases, we've had support for integration with NSXT as well as VMware vSphere, but we've enhanced this in a new release that's coming out in the next few weeks. Um, and this adds to the capabilities, um, both in terms of your sort of day two operations, monitoring, uh, telemetry gathering and whatnot, but we also have added additional design functionality um, and that is enabled by the connectivity templates, which Claire just touched on. Um, so to sort of make things <clears throat> simple, um, what happens within this integration is that Abstra AOS is able to talk to the NSXT controller in a read-only fashion. So it gathers information from NSXT from those controllers and attaches that data to points in that knowledge graph. Once that information is in the graph, we can apply some expert checks and, and, and attempt to reason about the data. And really the goal here is to ensure that whatever's happening in the virtual environment is totally mapped up with what's happening in the physical AOS managed fabric. And this is important because you know, as everybody knows, you have an, a, a network team and a server team, and there's always like, you know, they're in a separate part of the building. There's a wall between them, and they typically have this kind of tit for tat sort of um, back and forth about who's responsible for outages, right? That's that's sort of a natural thing. What we wanted to do here is, is sort of break down that wall and ensure that there is an effective um, computational communication process between what's happening in the, in the um, you know, the virtualization space and the fabric. And we want to guarantee that whatever is being programmed in the VMware environment is being adhered to in AOS. So we, you know, we talk about a single source of truth, um, but really obviously in, in an IT stack, there's multiple sources of truth. What we're doing here is we're taking instructions from that virtual um, overlay infrastructure and ensuring that the physical fabric is able to meet that. And what that means is that the, the physical connectivity, the lags to the servers, the routing to the servers, um, the MTU, the VLANs that are provisioned in the fabric, as well as VMs that might be stranded on a port group in the, in the virtual overlay, that we're checking for those particular types of anomalies. And this would cause a server team to say, oh, look, the network is, is broken. You know, I created a port group on my NSXT environment and I'm not able to route anything. And obviously, you know, the necessary plumbing hasn't been put in place. So we're marrying up these systems. Um, and again, this is read only. So we're not programming NSXT in any way. NSXT sort of exerts control over the AOS managed fabric. And in addition to this, I said that we attach the data that we gather from NSXT into the data store. And what this means is we're able to identify where all of those logical constructs are sitting on our physical fabric. That means that we can locate the, you know, we can identify the presence of hypervisor hosts. We can find where the VMs are. We can figure out what they need from the network, MTU, lags, um, the necessary VLANs for the transport zones, as well as, you know, potentially in the overlay. And, and we can just guarantee that. Um, and this is, you know, just using the normal AOS abstra functionality, um, but we provide some layering. So you're looking at the same views, but you can just switch over to, well, I'm just interested in looking at how my virtual infrastructure is attached to that. So you switch these layers on the physical fabric view and you can see this information. And then we can also take the data and pump it into the IBA processing system. So we'll, we'll constantly look for any deviation from how the fabric is configured to match that particular overlay. Um, and this all happens sort of automatically, right? This is enabled as soon as you connect AOS to the NSXT controller or even a vSphere environment, we automatically create the necessary dashboards, widgets and probes to perform these system checks. And what's really interesting about this is that it's not just checking to find out if there's an anomaly. We actually have this really simple sort of two-click process to remediate the problem so that you could effectively say, oh, look, the server team has, has you know, 
activated a new application. They're configuring new services and it's triggered an anomaly in my system. And now I just really quickly want to create the necessary VLANs or VXLANs attached to the proper um, routing domain, essentially a VRF to allow that communication to, to take place. And this all just sort of bubbles up in AOS. Again, we're trying to minimize what the operator has to do and what they have to look for in order to uh, make these changes. And this is um, effectively done for you, um, but you could also create your own custom dashboards, um, custom probes. You could look for different things than we're looking for, but we've really sort of knocked down the major issues that we find operators are struggling with. And this is under this dashboard that we automatically create, which is called Virtual Infrastructure Fabric Health Check. And again, this, this new functionality that we're announcing uh, in, an, in a few weeks that includes connectivity templates, which Claire uh, has, has gone into detail about, this allows us to do the necessary peering with the overlay. So previously, we just attached the, the VLANs to the, the Penix and assume that you know, the, the virtual machines can effectively route or, or switch onto the fabric. But what actually happens in an NSXT environment is you have your T0 and your T1 you know, virtual gateway, those edge gateways. And we actually wanna peer with them because we wanna take routing information, you know, availability of new virtual networks and reachability for hosts and subnets. And we want to like guarantee that that connectivity, that junction in the network is really tight. So you can use connectivity templates to configure a, an interface that has, you know, is comprised of an underlying um, lag or MLAG bond. And on top of that, you want to run your trip traditional 802.1Q trunking, carry some tags down into the server. But those tags are actually going to be part of additional, you know, your VRF, your, your routing domain. So you can carve up how the VRFs are attached to what particular tags. And then on each interface for the VRFs, you could say, well, I want static BGP peering, or maybe I want dynamic BGP peering with IPv6. Or maybe I want to peer instead of on directly connected interfaces, I want to peer with a loopback. Or lastly, we just want the, the ability to support static routes. And all of that is enabled with connectivity templates. So customers create connectivity templates to connect to the, the, edge, um, the edge gateways, the virtual routers, the tier zero devices. And that's just a standard template. And then anytime a new gateway comes online, they can identify where that is and just apply that connectivity template. So it's, it's super simple. And the templates, again, are global, so you can reuse them in AOS. Going in the reverse direction, so upstream for distributed firewall, right? <laughs> so do you guys have the same concept of being able to apply a template for the fact that you've got a distributed firewall running inside of NXT, or do you have the same thing for supported third party for things like Palo Alto? So you got like a Palo Alto Networks component that's running there. Can you do the reverse upstream to that to get the VRF light stitched into, right? Or VRF stitched into the actual Palo Alto. Form? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, the Palo Alto kind of firewall active active um, over a, a big MLAG bond and you've got it already right. sort of carved up. That's mm -hmm. an easy thing. Um, what you're sort of pointing out is that there is this idea of this distributed firewall, which exists kind of on the edge of that virtual switch. And um, you know, to, to VMware's defense, a lot of this is somewhat dynamic in that they basically want to egress like as fast as possible. Like once you approve the flow, they just want to sort of pop it onto the network. Now that ability to just dynamically deposit the traffic onto the network, um, we're not currently reading that information. And that is a, a um, you know, a feature enhancement that is coming, but what we can do is ensure that the virtual networks that the um, that distributed firewall would deposit the traffic onto is already plumbed into all the network, all of the, the necessary switches. So, okay. for example, so, if you're, I'm, I'm sorry. So, do, so it doesn't just bind. You just don't blindly accept. <laughs> no, no, right. no, we don't. And and you know, this is. Um, I mean, we can we can debate this all day long, but Appster is an intent-based network system, meaning that we want it to be extremely deterministic. So what we're probably going to do is gather the information from the NSXT controller about where we might see these packets just kind of pop out of that firewall and be deposited onto the network and then ensure that the necessary VLAN or VXLANs are there in order to carry the traffic around. And again, on a network that where you have like a hundred um, you know, physical switches, 
this is a, a big challenge because you have to put in the necessary configurations on all of the devices. And in Aptra, that's that's a, like that's one atomic change. You just say, I want a VXLAN that's across all my switches. I, there may be traffic, there may not be traffic, but let's just get all the VTEPs up and running so that EVPN can do the necessary advertisement of, of reachability for MAC addresses and IP addresses. So that's super simplified with AOS, but we're not currently accepting the dynamic information out of the NSXT controller about where that traffic might possibly egress. So yeah, at this yeah, point, we're still... saying that we were expecting the traffic to be egressing from those edge gateways. Yeah, it's still that's still a big win because I've worked on big enough fabric deployments where it's been missing and you're, everyone's screaming at each other because the server team can't actually get any of this stuff to work the way they want. So exactly. And uh, th uh, just lastly, there's there are um, there are, there is a way in which you could use connectivity templates to simplify this operation for you. But um, what we're not doing is just sort of blindly figuring out where NSXT is possibly going to be popping, you know, new IPs and new subnets onto the physical switches. So you do need to have a little bit of operator intervention. But again, what's important here is that we have this communication process to the NSXT controller. And now that we've got it and we're doing all the basic like kind of, you know, uh, belt and suspenders checks to make sure that we're perfectly plumbed into the network, that will add the ability to accept more dynamic information changes from the NSXT controller as the, the environment evolves. So with those connectivity templates, we can support the, the various designs that are recommended by, by VMware. So the standard single tier routing, as well as two tier routing with both tier zero and tier one gateways, and obviously VRF light, which is sort of a common you know, vanilla um, process to just plumb a whole bunch of, of VLANs with uh, dedicated routing for them. So with that being said, I'm gonna jump over to my uh, virtual environment. First, I just wanna start with showing you that this is a real NSXT environment. And I've got the tier zero gateway and that um, is actually active active. So I have two virtual machines on host that are sitting connected to my fabric. And I've already established the communication to the AOS server. And what you do is you tell AOS that there is um, some NSXT controller that's out there and it'll check and make sure that it can communicate properly. And then for each blueprint, you go into the blueprint and say that I want to connect to virtual infrastructure. And that's down here under virtual infrastructure. And you can see that I have a system address for 10.1.2.55 and that's my NSXT manager. And my um, policy is that if I want to remediate, I'm going to create a VXLAN instead of a local VLAN. And that, that is going to be attached to the VRF, which I call virtual infra. So we can specify when we remediate, we're popping them onto this particular routing domain. Okay. So um, what's, what's interesting here is that, you know, the ability for us to ensure that the network is, is properly functioning, both from the physical fabric up into the overlay, that's all handled as IBA probes. So quickly looking at my dashboard, I just have a standard view of my layer two and layer three services. You can see that I actually have an anomaly with one of my probes. And if I scroll down a bit, this is all sort of, um, the user can customize the default dashboard. But here I have an anomaly under virtual infra fabric health check that indicates that this particular hypervisor, which um, is NSXT and is connected to leaf one is actually missing VLAN 100. So there are, you know, there have been some changes in my virtual infrastructure and that is not properly plumbed into the network. And I can drill into it and see, you know, all the information that's coming out of the system. And again, these are just graph queries that pull the data in real time. So it's not like I run this check every few hours. I run this check real time, like every 30 seconds. So I detect things that have happened in the virtual infrastructure really before they've even completed those changes. And so the data trickles through the system and we get down to the end where, we trigger an anomaly. And this is the part that I mentioned to you before that we wanna make it simple to remediate these anomalies. So you can create a policy that says, create a VLAN or a VXLAN in this particular routing domain. And then when you see this anomaly, you get this little button that says remediate anomalies. And I just wanna show you how quick this is. I just click on this and immediately AOS provisions or is starting to create the changes for supporting VLAN 100, VN 100, in the network. And actually, AOS knows that 
Well, VLAN 100 already exists in the fabric, but it's just not connected to both of those edge gateways. It's connected to, to only one of them. So if I drill into this change, I'm currently looking in, in uncommitted. If I start to look at what it's trying to tell me, it's saying, okay, in the active network, you have um, these two leaf switches over here on the right. It's a little hard to see with my screen, but each server is dual connected to those top of rack leaf switches and the lag is there. And you can see here that one of the servers is plumbed down onto that VN100. But over here on the left, the other server is not. And the change that's being made that's automatically created by that one click process is that I'm going to turn up VN100. In VN100, that, you know, that might be a VLAN or it could be a VXLAN. And if it's a VXLAN, I need to stand up the VTEP. I need to create routing adjacencies via EVPN with my upstream uh, systems. So it's not as simple as just like one or two commands. And AOS will say that, well, you're missing VN100 across a hundred different switches. And all of this change is represented as one atomic change. Again, in uncommitted, it's just one commit. So over here on the left is the change that's gonna be implemented, which, which is effectively just put that one server uh, looks like my screen is refreshing. Put that one server onto that particular virtual network. So everything in, in AOS is, you know, kind of checkpoint, checkpointed. Um, let me just close this window and move some stuff around. And you can see up here on under uncommitted, I click on commit and I say, um, I am going to uh, resolve uh, missing VLAN 100. So even if this change is like change all devices, change all expectations, change all my telemetry and monitoring functionality, it's one change in AOS. And this leverages that time uh, Voyager system that's built into everything in, in AOS. So as soon as I do that, the changes are, are pushed into the network. And now I can go into the analytics and see when that gets resolved. So if I scroll down here, you can see that the anomaly that I had before for hypervisor VLANs that are missing in Fabric, that's gone. Um, other things that we're checking with this particular set of probes in this dashboard is the PNIC lag status, ensuring that the hashing algorithm on both sides is matching. And that if I intend for every server to have two NICs and they should be bonded together and the link should be up, that they are actually up. Okay, so make sure that, you know, layer, physical layer one, layer two, everything looks good. We also look for deviations in MTU. Obviously, as we're transporting these encapsulated packets, we need larger jumbo frame support. So you can dial in exactly what you want the MTU to be, and then you'll take information from NSXT to ensure that that matches or that the deviation is acceptable. Um, and then lastly, we're looking for servers that might have VLANs that are misconfigured. Maybe there are VMs that are just completely stranded on their port groups. And we want to alert the user like, hey, these are all on a port group that's just not accessible. And you're probably going to have to plumb them in some way onto a PNIC or connect that into one of those um, edge, you know, edge gateways in order to route. Maybe it's a, a security network or a key management network or a storage network, and you just want it totally isolated. And that's fine. You can ignore that. But we want to bubble all of that up. Now, in addition to having that system check, we also take the data uh, from the data center object in VMware and we map it into the network. So taking a look at the network, I can say, all right, here is you know, just kind of a standard two by two. And let's apply this layer that looks at the virtual infrastructure. So I'll scroll down and I'll say, has hypervisor. Now in this view, this layer, green represents that there is an actual hypervisor on these particular um, servers. And if I sort of drill into the devices and go over to virtual, I can eventually view that there are uh, virtual machines that are connected to, um, to these devices. Now, um, a couple of the things that are, are pretty important in a virtual infrastructure is that I wanna be able to find things like, you know, the, the packets are obscured by the fact that they're encapsulated, but we can read information from the, you know, from the NSXT controller. And we can also look at the network characteristics of those hypervisor enabled hosts. What I mean is that if you turn on LDP on the hypervisor, on the, the distributed virtual switch, then we can identify exactly which physical port those hypervisors are on. So then we know that the VMs are actually on these physical ports and we can properly map out the necessary um, maps to say, oh, well, from this particular 
host on the left hand side, which is, isn't going to be a rack. I want to say that, you know, maybe it's a, um, you know, a server. Um, I want to see all of the pathing that exists in my network to determine where those traffic flows might be taking place. But just to kind of go back to basics, we have this query functionality. And we had this before just for Macs and ARPs. Like you want to locate a Mac address, an IP address, regardless of whether or not it's in the overlay or the underlay. But we also now have this functionality for virtual machines. And what this does is not only does it gather information about virtual machines, and there's some virtual machines we may not be able to locate. Like they're way beyond the, the tier zero gateway. LDP is not enabled. We don't, we know that they're on a, a host or hypervisor, but we don't know where that hypervisor is because LDP is, is disabled. But the point is that we're going to marry up this data as well as we can to give you a, 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 a comprehensive view of what's on the network. So here on the left-hand side, here are my virtual machine names, all of the virtual machines that we've discovered from NSXT or from uh, vCenter. And what server is it hosted on? This is the name that's coming from the VMware environment. And then what is it connected to in the AOS environment? And admittedly, we have a, a slightly different naming convention for how things are connected to the physical fabric. So I'm saying here, it's actually on what we call server two. And we have information about what server two is doing. Server two is running ESXi 6.7. And then we can see the VM IPs. And this, again, is just gathered by you know, from, from VMware. And then we can identify where those IP addresses might be by looking at our, our CAM and our ARP table. We can see what physical leaf interfaces. And here it's interesting. We're only seeing this, these uh, information about the leaf in interfaces here because the virtual machines are actually slightly obscured from our view because these two VMs are an HA pair um, for that tier zero gateway. And we just know that we need to route to those devices in order to get to those necessary virtual machines. So we can't tell exactly where they are because again, you know, Geneva encapsulation is kind of obscure to us. We're taking as much information as we can possibly get from VMware and attaching it to that, that graph model. And then uh, lastly, we can see port group information determine where it is the logical construct that exists in the overlay and, and sort of isolate where a potential problem might be. And we can see you know, virtual infrastructure um, information, like what's the IP address of the hypervisor that's hosting this particular VM. So that's it in a nutshell. It's you know, design functionality enhancements related to connectivity templates that give you the ability to do all of that necessary peering that you wanted to do before. The um, you know, belt and suspenders approach where we ensure that the connection between the physical fabric and the overlay is rock solid. So you can't possibly mess that up. And then take instructions from the overlay as far as what the, you know, the server operators are possibly doing and trying to sort of get ahead of the phone ringing, right? We see, oh, there's an anomaly. Oh yeah, they do this all the time. They created a new VLAN. Let's just plummet and just get, you know, let's just not take the call, not open a ticket, do things like that. And this is moving in the direction of that self-operating auto automatically remediating uh, network that we've, we've promised. So at this point, I'm gonna pause and take any questions that, um, that you might have. But uh, you know, if you have another network engineer that maybe goes in and mucks about with your config, uh, on the actual device uh, without going through Abstra, how is that handled? So um, by default in 60 seconds, that triggers a configuration deviation anomaly. And you're presented in the UI with two views. One is the intended view and the other is the essentially the, what's active. And the diff is called out in a different color. So you can immediately see that there's a problem there. Um, and then you're given two options. Either you can just say, you know what? I don't like this change overwrite it, or you can say, actually that change is um, from a legacy system. Maybe you've got an Ansible script that pushes some, something in there. And I wanna accept that. And AOS will kind of ignore it in the sense that, hey, I don't manage this, but I'm not gonna freak out if it's there. Um, and that's, that's on you know, by default in, in an intent-based networking system. Um, and again, it's set to 60 seconds, which is typically how long or less than how long it takes to actually make the change. You can dial that down to 30 seconds or five seconds or whatever you want. 